Hello again, Adam Fairclough, aka Evil Boris, here once more. This time I'm going to be taking a look at one of this month's biggest releases, Electronic Arts and Bioware's Anthem. First shown off at E3 2017, Anthem has been looking like it was going to impress in the graphics department from day one, and it's certainly not let us down here. The game is clearly pushing some of the aging consoles to their max, and on PC you can really ramp things up to a scarily impressive level. But of course today I'm here to have a look at the HDR of Anthem. So of course the first stop as per usual is going to be a trip into the settings. As of this video having been recorded I'm running about the third patch of the game which has come out uh, a week since launch. Annoyingly they accidentally removed the HDR with the day one patch but it's back in again. In the video settings we have a fairly unremarkable selection of choices, just a simple brightness adjustment. This is sometimes a blessing and sometimes a curse. More often than not this hasn't been the best sign as these settings are usually accompanied by vague instructions about adjusting the brightness until you cannot see the logo and are often making adjustments that are not really designed for HDR. Of course there are exceptions to this. Now to cut a long story short, there is an issue with this adjustment and this is the same issue that Destiny 2 suffers from. This adjustment actually changes the black point. Moving a slider below the center point will literally clip out black and near black data. It doesn't make the image necessarily dimmer or darker, it literally removes and cuts off the data that you want to see and you can't retrieve it via adjustments on your display. You can see this with just a small adjustment where the black detail has disappeared and purple artifacts have shown up and with a bigger adjustment it just flat out ruins everything. There is no need to ever do this. Leave this setting in the centre or reset it to the default. In the other direction however you might want to elevate the brightness a little bit if you're playing in a bright room and you can't see the left logo. So a bit of a boo-boo there with that screen but hey it's nothing we can't deal with at least now we know. Anthem is considered a live title so I expect lots of tweaks and adjustments, patches and updates over the coming weeks and months so hopefully we'll see some improvements here with the HDR settings. Generally the other Frostbite games such as Battlefield 5, Mass Effect Andromeda and even FIFA uh, have not had any major adjustments with the HDR so it's quite unlikely this can't be remedied. A max luminance adjustment, paper white and a properly functioning brightness adjustment would all be welcomed. So looking at the game itself when it's up and running, overall the game appears to have a reasonably high APL. I don't think many people will complain about the game looking dark. From some spot checks I would estimate the game is functioning with a diffuse or paper white of around 300 nits which is relatively bright and with menu elements also getting to about 300 nits for white. I've got my max fall and max ELL graphs working properly now thanks to the bugs in the calculation being ironed out so we can get a better overall look at the average luminance of each frame. So this time round actually max fall is the figure we're going to be looking at as what I discovered is after I rendered the graph is various on-screen elements here are actually rendering with values as high as 10,000 nits, specifically elements from the on-screen HUD. Now this means that there is always something on screen at 10,000 nits and this is something I've pointed out before as a little bit of an annoyance as it will influence a display's brightness limiting or the display's APL adjustments that are being made and this will actually take away from the overall HDR impact on displays that are sensitive to this. Potentially an area of concern is that the reticule in the centre of the screen is always in the same place and it is also one of these really high value elements so if you're really going to binge this game for long periods of time then the speed of say pixel burnout on an emissive display might be something you want to consider. So what you can see here is lots of really pink areas in the visualization and this is the engine kicking out 2,000, 4,000 nit data with areas such as the sun and even things like the center of your jetpack burners getting to 10,000 nits. For the most part this doesn't cause any issues, however on my display which handles luminance above its native 1000 nit output by a hard clip, areas around the sun and clouds can often appear blown out despite the data being there. So perhaps this is an argument for why a max luminance slider is useful. 
We've also managed to get a waveform monitor up and running for some of the footage, which is often a really simple way to see where the black floor is and read some of the actual NIT outputs in a slightly different way. Let me know what you think of that little visualization running there if you're familiar with it. I'm not sure whether I'll use this in future because it takes a long, long time to, to render out and it really slows down the production of this video. Just like other games running the Frostbite engine, Anthem makes use of all kinds of modern and sophisticated rendering techniques to deliver real standout visuals. One of the main engine features is the physical based lighting, which allows for light to respond to surfaces in a realistic fashion. And this means that even colour values that fall within sRGB or Rec. 709 can be lit or affected by other effects and light sources and push a value into the larger WCG colour range. I've actually got two visualizations here that pertain to the color volume. The main on screen image is placing anything within the SDR sRGB Rec. 709 color space as grayscale, and anything falling outside of that will actually show as color. But the bulk of this is going to be coming from the game running with such a high paper white, with values above 100 nits being a really constant occurrence. The second visualization gives more of a clue as to how the game has been made. The CIE 1931 diagram at the bottom has two color spaces marked. The larger triangle represents the area for BT 2020 slash Rec 2100 and the smaller triangle being sRGB slash Rec 709. So what we actually see is that the color space being used falls well within the range of Rec 709 with a few specs drifting outside of this and with the occasional burst or flare clearly kicking up into the wider area of BT 2020. This suggests that like the vast majority of games, this has been made primarily using Rec. 709 assets and then moved into the HDR PQ. So we're getting some of the benefit of HDR here, but we're maybe not getting as much of a benefit from the increased color gamut. We do see it occasionally, but not loads and loads. This is an area that I think we'll see games improve in over time as software packages that developers are actually using to produce the titles start to get better support for wider colour gamut stuff. So just to wrap it up again, brightness adjustment is broken. I'd leave that well alone. However, the overall output is pleasing and impactful, of course, with some room for improvement. Thank you again for watching. If you do like what I do here, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons at the bottom for HDTV test. Thanks again. <laughs>